Broadcasting from the Unshackled Studios in Melbourne, this is Wilms Front, brought to you by theunshackled.net. Now here's Tim Wilms. Oh, just move over a bit, Alan. Uh, Dr. Alan Moran, he was the director of the deregulation uh, unit at the Institute of Public Affairs from 1996 to 2014. He has written countless research papers, parliamentary submissions, op-eds, as well as television and radio appearances. He published uh, Climate Change, The Facts 2014, and also uh, Climate Change, uh, Treaties and Policies in the Trump Era that was published by Conocourt Publishing. He now runs a regulation economics, a policy advocacy organization focused on deregulation, including energy policy. Alan. Hi, Tim. Thanks for joining me in the studio. Uh, very my pleasure. Uh, we've been uh, friends for, for quite a number of years now, but I don't get out to sort of the, the, the functions much anymore. So, yeah, um, it's good that we we'll get to catch up and also uh, you appear on my new show. Yeah, very pleased to be in your studio. And now, the federal election back in May, it was billed as the, the climate uh, change election. I'll just move that closer. Uh, that uh, that uh, Bill Shorten, he was offering a 50% renewable energy target, a uh, 45% uh, emissions reduction by 2030 from uh, 2005 levels. And of course, he was flip-flopping on the Adani coal mine and all the polls said Shorten was, was going to win. Uh, but uh, of course, we had the, well, he lost the unlosable election and the polls turned out to be wrong and that's when the the quiet australians and the probably the vocal queenslanders uh, voted that uh, they wanted the adani coal mine they didn't want sky high power prices yeah yeah i've got to say it was it, it, even though it was humiliation for the labor party it was quite a close run thing you know almost 49 percent of people voted for those policies which were would have uh, jacked up fuel prices considerably more than we We've already seen them, them jacked up. Uh, they would have stopped coal mining in its tracks, uh, or new coal mines in, in its tracks. Would have been uh, quite a disaster for the nation had uh, had the, the Labour Party got elected. And it's uh, but we're by no means out of the mire at the present time because the present government is, uh, yeah, all, although it's trying to correct things, it feels constrained or is constrained by a slender majority in the Parliament and by public opinion. So, you know, we, 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 there is some to move back away from those policies which have been in place now for 20 odd years uh there is some move back from them but it's a very it's a snail's pace move yeah it's we're certainly not out of the woods in terms of getting energy affordable again i know mm. that there's good things coming out of scott morrison and angus taylor's uh, mouth in terms of energy affordability, but uh, they still, especially when they're on the the ABC. Uh, I saw Angus Taylor with Frank Kelly on Insiders, and he, uh, when, when she's the worst one on the ABC, she was pre uh, kept pr uh, pressing him on on climate action and about the student uh, strikers, and Angus Taylor all, all just said, "No, no, no, we're doing our bit." Well, I mean, that's what the, that's what the message is. Uh, the, the the facts are we've seen. The price of electricity increase on the wholesale markets by a two and a half fold in, in just a few years as a result of the renewable subsidies. Uh, those subsidies have driven out business, the more reliable uh, and dependable uh, 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 low cost uh, coal powered stations, or a couple of the major ones. And so we've seen the price uh, skyrocket. Uh, and. Uh, Taylor's got an, an enviable task, really. Uh, he he basically is seeking to uh, keep a lid on the prices and see them decline over the next few years. But essentially, uh, we have in place a whole system of subsidies for uh, renewable energy, which means that they they get paid two twice or two, more than twice as much uh, for their energy than than coal or, or other forms of energy obtain, and uh, are able to run whenever they can run uh whenever the wind blows in other words or the sun shines uh and uh, in doing so will displace the 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 forms of energy and force them into an uneconomic operation stop start etc and they, they 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 were designed to run you know 80 90 odd percent of the time uh, and not to keep stopping and starting so it it, it totally screws our economics and is forcing them to close 
Uh, Angus Taylor is, you know, he, he's doing his best, but it's essentially what he's doing is papering over the cracks and hoping uh, that we, we put a stop to new uh, renewables coming into the market and gradually their, their uh, detrimental effects will be removed. Uh, but uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a long haul to get there and uh, I'm by no means certain that he has the right policies to do it. I'll just get you to move your chair a bit, a bit closer in so the audience can see better, that's better. And I'll just move that there. It's the first time I've had a guest uh, live in the studio with this this new format. So Alan is unfortunately the... You notice that Tim has got his chair higher than mine, so just to prove he's uh, senior. <laughs> I wouldn't be pretend, pretend to be your senior. <laughs> now... You're obviously you've got a British uh, accent, so I'm sure you're aware what's happening in the the UK with uh, uh, Boris Johnson. He, he's ba he's basic. Well, the the whole uh, British establishment that tried to thwart the people's will for three years, and Nigel Farage, uh, Mr. Brexit, leader of the Brexit Party, he's talked about uh, losers consent that democracy only works if there's losers consent, and we haven't seen that in Australia with regard to the basically was the climate referendum because in Brisbane uh, we've seen the Extinction Rebellion group uh, basically disrupt the, the city, uh, super gluing themselves to roads and crossings, putting canoes on roads, and they've also been joined by the, the local socialist alternative and uh, Jackie Trad and Anastasia Palaszczuk, uh, they're, they're basically the co-leaders of, of Queensland. They've had to be dragged kicking and screaming to actually pass stronger laws than that but the, uh, the, these climate well they believe we're in a climate emergency so they've t spoken about for years these climate activists that we need to suspend democracy uh to to, to address the climate crisis well i think this is uh, throughout the world we have this uh the lack of a loser's consent i mean we can see it with trump uh we can see what you said with brexit and and percolating all economic policy and political policy, social policy as well is this this climate issue which has been bubbling along for for two two decades two or three decades now but uh, and essentially the most outrageous uh, requirements are being made by uh, people who say we've got to get uh, even the ALP policy we've got to go to 50 percent or 100 percent or whatever it is renewables and this these renewables they don't work or they they do work, but they, they work at only a, a very high price and uh, and create all sorts of uncertainties for, for business operations. I think, uh, uh, so, you know, we, we, there is a crisis of democracy going on because the they, they losers do not consent to have lost an election anymore and, and, uh, and will, will do all in their power to frustrate election victories, which I don't think used to happen even 20 years ago. Uh, and then we have this underlying current of saying we, we have an extinction crisis we have a, we have a crisis which uh, mankind is creating in the world and we can only fix it by totally changing our our, our way of living uh, and and, uh, and and reducing our standard of living it's very uh, very difficult to see how this will end certainly all the people who are most vociferous in this uh, tend to be quite rich uh, and the, 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 the sort of uh, asides about the uh, the children's uh, crusade, the children's revolt, was that it's just as well it, they, they didn't have their, their uh, revolt on a Saturday because none of them would have turned up. They turned up because it was a school day and they could have a frolic and, and throw frisbees and, and, and you know, do the sort of things that young people do. But they, these young people that come to school in their, their mother's SUVs, they don't walk to school anymore, they, they have no conception of what it means for them if in fact we do uh, dismantle our economies in the way they want us to do. I heard a, a, a doozy uh, of an excuse to as why uh, children it was right for them to take the, the, the Friday off school because it was the last day of, of term uh, at least in, in Melbourne and that last day of term it's it's usually a bludge anyway so it may as well do. <laughs> maybe activism. that's true yeah maybe that's true. Actually, in, in, uh, it is said that there are three million people, children who were demonstrating around the world, and it's claimed that there were 300,000 in Australia, which is uh, a remarkable percentage. It's 10% of uh, uh, the, uh, the demonstrators, if, this, if those figures are correct, were, were from Australia, which has got you know, maybe 1% of the world's population. 
Now, the Adani coal mine uh, in central Queensland, that was obviously the, the centrepiece of the, the federal election, and it was the vote in Queensland that helped deliver uh, the, the coalition and Scott Morrison an increased uh, majority. Now, uh, this uh, uh, coal mine uh, in, in the Carmichael region, it's an Indian company, Adani, they've been trying to get approval for, for nearly a decade now, and it seems, well, the final approval has been signed off, but there's still all these environmental. Like, it's like the the Hunger Games with the, with a new challenge every yeah. every time for, and you just sort of think, wow, these these Adani, they must be really committed to, uh, uh, mining and and getting it back to India. Well, I mean, I I suppose it's they 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 made the initial investments of time and energy and money. Uh, and basically, uh, I, I would doubt very much that Adani would have made that commitment if they had known that there was going to be a 10-year gestation period before they even put a, put a shovel in the ground. Uh, and I think they may, have, they may have started doing some work now. But, you know, one thing after another, first of all, they were going to destroy the water table, then they, then they, were, they, they were going to, uh, there was all these finches and various other animals which were, were allegedly threatened. I mean, this animals threatened by a coal mine is, is absurd. I mean, the coal mine is a tiny pinprick. It can't possibly have any effect in terms of uh, extinction crises sorts of uh, magnitudes. And then there was talks about, oh, well, Adani is, after all, getting massive subsidies, which I don't think they were. So one way or another, they, they, they went through this colossal process, um, highly politicized process. And I think the sad thing about it is, is that any other business thinking of investing in Australia is going to be looking at that and going to now putting a very high premium on the on the investment risk. I can't imagine an Australian company uh, bother or bothering to go through that approval process or wanting to invest in a coal mine uh, to, uh, to begin with because they're all on board with the uh, divestments uh, from coal. I mean they couldn't get uh, funding from the big banks uh, Adani. Well, yeah, that's true. The big banks don't lend money on, on that sort of things anyway. Anybody who is going to get funding there would be on the New York market or they go to the Chinese banks or the Japanese bank. There, there really isn't a problem in, in getting funding uh, for these sorts of activities. There's a thousand coal mines being being funded across the world and they've all, they've all got funding okay. And Australian uh, funding for Australian mines would be no different in the end. There may be a premium as a result of the shenanigans we've seen with the Adani mine, but but certainly the funding is available, and uh, it doesn't matter what the the NABs and the Commonwealth banks and all that sort of all those people say they aren't going to fund it. They they haven't funded major pieces of capital like this for 20 years, and and they, they, it's not their core business. Now I think you and I first met. It would have been at the no carbon tax rally on the steps of Victoria's Parliament back in in 20. 11 which, Could have been, yes yes and because i was still a a young young man then and uh, i was in school when el gore's uh, inconvenient truth the first premiered and that was that the first uh, climate crisis and obviously I've, i'm nearly 30 now i seem to have survived uh the, the first climate crisis but now they're the climate activists assisted by the the teachers now trying with the the, the next uh, generation and I mentioned that you know it seems to be that because parents they don't know what goes on in school and so teachers these days have got a free run with students to basically shape their their worldview and they've really been terrified if you saw these the speeches at the climate strikes I mean they really believe that the world is going to end in the next 10 years even though I was told 10 years ago that the world was going to end in that 10 years mm, yeah well, I think that's the case, and there's certainly um, the, the the sort of left and green left has has seized the uh, the institutions, uh, the, obviously the schools uh, and higher education as well, and even the Catholic Church, judging by statements from the Pope and uh, you know e even sort of conservative political parties in in Europe. And Merkel was uh, seen in a highly publicised picture talking to Greta uh, in in at the UN. Uh, so you know that that those sorts of uh, 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 of institutions are now in control. I'm not I'm, I'm not sure how strong the ap apocalypse uh, apocalyptic uh, uh, ferment is with children. Uh, 
Um, you know, you see, yes, of course, there are some very vivid examples of, of, of young young men and women speaking about uh, about the, the, the end of the world in five years, ten years, two months, whatever it is, absurd numbers. Um, and they, they, they clearly have been influenced by someone, presumably their teachers. But uh, I'm hopeful that there's a certain cynicism uh, of younger people with regard to their, quote, betters, unquote, who are teaching them these things, uh, rather along the lines of the South Park uh, cynicism, which you can see where the, the, the kids there basically don't uh, accept their, their teachers' uh, writs uh, and philosophies. And perhaps, uh, hopefully, that will be the case uh, in, in teaching throughout the Western world, because if it's not, uh, we, we generally have got a new generation of people who are believing in things which are absurd, irrational, and would be cat catastrophic for the economies. It's really sad that these children who should just be uh, children, they're living in one of the most technologically advanced times and it's only going to get better in terms of technological adv advancement they should be enjoying uh, basically what's been created instead they're 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 scared they're anxious there's now a a condition called uh, eco anxiety and it was interesting that i watched uh, sky, sky news yesterday uh with uh, uh chris kenny he he interviewed a, a child psychologist and well, it, it, uh, she, she looked probably well, in her 30s, she had short blonde hair, you know, not your stereotypical what you'd think of uh, s somebody that uh, would, that the left would char characterize as, as being a, a critic of climate change, but she was just looking at it, she didn't have an opinion on climate change, but just the, just the medical, uh, because she was seeing these children and seeing how distressed they, they were, just looking at it from a, a psychology perspective, and it is child abuse you don't you don't want to use that that term lightly but uh, if if you're if you're like torturing them with fear all the time what else can you call it well yes it is and uh, you know they certainly it certainly in, does influence great numbers of young people uh they they just believe in it anymore now and uh, i i I've talked to a few people, young people, and they say, even conservative young people say, and they'll, they'll just say, I believe in it. And you say, well, you know, the temperatures haven't gone up and the hurricanes haven't gone, gone uh, increased and there is no uh, reduction in polar bears. All the, all the, 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 the hot button issues which are mentioned uh, as allegedly proving climate change is happening, none of them are actually substantiated by the, the evidence. But people don't listen. They basically, there is this, uh, the, the, this, this it's, it's part of the polarization that we, we talked about earlier, that people uh, don't listen to views which are contrary to those of their own mindset. Basically, they shut them out uh, and, and only look for substantiation from their own side. We saw the uh, academic Australian opinion website, The Conversation, not just ban uh, uh, content uh, that is climate change skeptic but also comments underneath the, the the stories as well which is that that's a step up because i know that uh the guardian they uh banned uh, climate change skepticism articles a while back but banning comments as well and a lot of people pointed out the website's called the conversation they should rename itself because that's consumer fraud they should be called the echo chamber the echo chamber the monologue uh, yeah, I think that's that's quite true. It is actually astonishing that, that that's been allowed to occur. Um, after all, it's, it's largely taxpayer funded. Uh, so basically, uh, the taxpayers are funding people to actually um, uh, to, to shut down their views, at least the majority of their views, because the majority voted, voted for the Conservative parties. So yeah, uh, the, it, it's a dreadful situation we've come across there. But it seems to percolate the whole of the universes, and uh, we, we've seen other cases of, of, of shutting down of, of uh, free speech in universities before that, here in Australia and also in the United States and the UK. Yeah, and it's it's not just obviously the media and the activists, but talked about businesses. They gave some of their workers the the day off on Friday to uh, go to the climate strike, and also uh, local councils, which have become a cesspool of activism as well, tried to. Well, they're passing the climate emergency motions and 
uh, wanted to give their council workers the the day uh, the day off to to go and attend the climate strike. Mm, mm, mm. Now uh, we're going to move on to uh, Greta Thunberg, who's who's been in the news. Um, if you don't mind, I'm just going to play a bit of her speech. Okay. So um, put on the the headphones. So. My message is that we'll be watching you. <laughs> This is all wrong. I shouldn't be up here. I should be back in school on the other side of the ocean. Yet you all come to us young people for hope. How dare you? You have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words. And yet I'm one of the lucky ones. People are suffering. People are dying. Entire ecosystems are collapsing. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction, and all you can talk about is money and fairy tales of eternal economic growth. How dare you! Now, I tried to ignore the, the Greta Thunberg phenomena because I sort of I didn't want to fall into the 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 trap that was set up by the the left they they they're trying to make people like you and I become obsessed with her and think that we're fixated and threatened by her so i chose to ignore the the phenomenon for as long as i could uh, and when andrew bolt uh, he basically introduced her to australia called her, her deeply disturbed uh, mentioned her obviously her, her disabilities and i thought well at the time i thought well that's a bit rough uh, andrew bolt but when she was going to address the the united nations she made that uh voyage by ship to the uh, united states uh, which they had to get jets to to bring the, the <laughs> the boat back uh, which which was widely reported as well but seeing that that i i can see why people are disturbed by it because she she does look and like a, a few commentators have been quite crude and said she looks like a demon from the omen the the children of the corn which is like ob obviously that's that's using quite colorful language but that's where sort of your mind goes and like i said she's the embodiment of how these these young people are being scared and the fact that she's at the united nations and that she's being cheered and that and she she is literally called the the second coming that's what sarah silverman a u.s comedian uh said uh van badham uh who's one of our, our local feminists uh, sa uh said that uh, she's an example of divine intervention she was sent from up above and you sort of think how did this debate uh, basically over whether we should mitigate uh, man-made emissions get to to this cult-like stage it's absolutely astonishing i mean uh, the, the speech or the part of the speech that you showed there it really shows a, a rather disturbed young woman uh making assertions which have got no basis whatsoever uh and making this in this extremely accusative sent way these these aren't these aren't measured these aren't uh, rational assessments of statements she's making they're just they're just statements and of anger uh, and uh, you know it, it is astonishing I, I can't think of any era uh, of humankind where this would have happened before uh, you know where where somebody who was ill-educated uh, has no worldly knowledge whatsoever is treated uh, put on a pedestal and uh, allowed to subject adults if you like to uh, to to these accusations uh, uh based on on nothing and the reason obviously the reason why the greens and the left uh, like this is because well she, she's difficult to touch because she's 16 and uh, an immature young woman uh, who, and you, you, you can't. Anybody who criticises is then accused of criticising youth, uh, and and uh, and and and, and uh, is vilified for it. And I, I noticed somebody on uh, on Fox uh, in the US was was um, taken off the air. For yeah, Michael making, Knowles from yeah, Daily Wire. Yeah, for for making some statements about her. But clearly, what, the things she's saying are absurd. 
and yet she is she 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 meets the pope the pope uh, and there's a, a well publicized picture of her with angela merkel um, even trump make, has has to respond uh, to her make some some even though he obviously thinks she, she, she's a, there's no semblance of any rationality in anything she's saying but he has to respond uh, Scott Morrison even, uh, you know, he's making statements saying, well, you know, we're, we're getting vilified in Australia, but, you know, we're doing more than others. We're doing more we're, per capita, per, we're doing more, spending more, we're wasting more money than anybody else on this issue, and, and so don't criticise us. Well, Trump and Morrison, they've reacted very well, I think, in response to uh, Greta's speech. Uh, uh, Trump sarcastically retweeted it, saying she seems like such a, a happy optimistic girl obviously <laughs> yeah. that's he, he's he's master of the the twitter yeah. uh, trolling and and scott morrison obviously he's he's more of a conventional politician basically he talked about the issue at hand the yeah. the scaring of of children so uh, obviously trump and, and morrison have spent a a week together it's talked about there's a there's a bromance and obviously uh they uh, they came to a decent amount of consensus during that state dinner because they're, they're They've come to similar worldviews, and obviously their the influence on each other has, has rubbed off. Hopefully, that's the case. Certainly, I'd like to see uh, Scott Morrison uh, emulate more of the American uh, positions in terms of deregulation, especially of energy, um, than he has done so far. Um, uh, but, but uh, you know, certainly uh, Morrison's he, his values are in the right sort of place, and he wants to do things that, that basically. Risk, restore some uh, some commerciality to the Australian system uh, and uh, you know hopefully the hopefully it will prevail on that but but uh, you know the, the, our system is so mired in the in this mindset the, the climate change and other other regulatory mindsets we, we haven't talked about things like labor re regulations etc but all of these things uh, basically uh, uh, create create friction which, which prevent us from achieving the sorts of living standards that we could easily have. We, we, Australia is easily the wealthiest country in the world in terms of natural wealth and yet we don't do that well in terms of, uh, of our pecking order within the developed, developed world. Now the activists and globalists, they've used uh, children uh, for quite a number of years as, as uh, spokespeople. Uh, there was there was actually a story that popped up that there was a, I didn't look up her name, but the, the Rio 1992 Earth Summit, that was opened up by a child as well. So yeah. it's, it's mm -hmm. not really new. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's right. It's very evocative to use children. And, uh, you know, even though they are children, they, they aren't fully formed as, as adults. Their, their opinions aren't, uh, uh, you know, often tend to be uh, extreme opinions. And especially... A troubled young woman like Greta uh, is uh, even more so. But you know, it's, it's, it, we, we, we we should not be taking advice from children. They don't have the vote for a very good reason. Uh, you know that pe people under under eighteen don't have a vote because we as societies, in fact, all over the world, uh, consider from long experience that they don't have the maturity to make these decisions. You mentioned South Park before. Uh, the the, uh, the criticism that we're getting for uh, attacking a a child. Uh, uh, there's an episode of South Park where they're trying to get a Starbucks uh, banned from from South Park, and they're uh, they're going to have a a proposition vote on it. And the ad has the the four children, and it says, uh, "Vote yes on this uh, prop, or you hate children." You don't hate children, do you? <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's basically perfect representation of this. Yeah, yeah. Because, like, obviously, like, I, I won't say your age, but you've got grey hair, and so when people such as yourself or uh, Sam Newman, for example, uh, who called uh, Greta an annoying little brat, it's, oh, you're so threatened by this. Uh, a uh, 16 year old girl you uh, old uh, conservative man she's she's hurting your your fragile little feelings more ha that's <laughs> that's sort of the petty re response that you're only attacking her because you're you're threatened by her well it's it's, it's certainly not the case there the annoying little brat is is, is arguably attacking because you feel as though you're threatened by her but but essentially you just go through the each of the issues that she's talking about uh, you know this this um the, the fact that or, 
she's saying that there's, there's going to be mass extinctions, that people are dying, that you know, uh, and it's all due to you people, not to, to my generation. And our generation has only got this. Some people say only ten years to live, and some people even less. I mean, these things are scientifically absurd. They, they, they're, you know, they, they, they just need to be rebutted, but nobody wants to rebut them because they feel as though, yeah, it, it's exaggeration, it's not that bad, but she, her heart's in the right place. We ought to be moving towards that sort of, that, that sort of a, a scenario. Well, she said people are dying. There's, what, what evidence has she got well, to, there's to not back at that all. up? There's none at all. I mean, far fewer people are dying of natural, natural catastrophes and causes now than at any time in, in human history. Yeah. I mean, and people, you know, lives are being wrecked. Well, people are richer now than any time in human history. People live longer than any time in human history. We have more, you know, uh, telecommunications and 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 and, uh, and playthings than in any time in human history. We work less than in any time in human history. It's just just absurd to to make this this apocalyptic uh, scenarios that she's making, and and yet they're taken seriously. Well, it's a step up from, because uh, a few years ago they were talking about climate refugees, that Pacific Islands, they were all going to become uh, under water yeah. and we were going to have to accept all these climate uh, refugees. But then it was interesting lately that the ABC was forced to, uh, when they fact check uh, Craig Kelly, that um, the Pacific Islands has actually increased. Yeah, <laughs> it was correct. I mean, the fact climate refugees was a big feature of the, you probably don't remember, the, the Garno report, which was the Labour Party. Oh, yeah, I remember. Put in, uh, about uh, 10 years or so ago. And actually, the Garno report was written by the chap who's now the head of the Treasury, of all people. It was pointed by the present government. Uh, we got back a guy called Stephen Kennedy. Uh, you know, the, the Garno report had all these climate refugees, and they, and they they'd factored in, you know, what, what it would, one of the things it would cost us. Uh, because there's, there's going to be mass inundation. Nobody believes that anymore. And it didn't even actually feature with the IPCC, which is the, 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 the Bible of all these uh, uh, climatic disturbances. They, they even think very much, they, they thought it was highly unlikely. As I mentioned, we've survived all these scares and they, they, their strategy seems to be keep scaring us, just exaggerating it more and more. And you can you can pinpoint this this doomsday uh, flop uh, back to that 1968 book, the population bomb that yeah. we're all gonna all uh, die and starve from from uh, population uh, boom, and well, that's over 50 years old now. Mm. Well, I mean, and that's that 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 was totally discredited, and yet the the authors of that still are lionized in in academic circles. In fact, I I got involved uh, in in this climate change business in in the 1990s, in which in which case uh, a very good friend of mine, uh, who was a, a professor of climatology uh, in 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 Phoenix, Arizona, uh, basically said to me, "Listen, this climate change." Uh, it, don't knock it, Alan. I'm doubling my professorial salary on this, doing bits and pieces on it. And basically, we've now got the satellites up in the air, and that evidence is going to come steadily through. And in 12 years' time, the evidence will prove that it's just a furor, there's nothing nothing to it, and it'll all be over. And by then, I'm, I'm ready to, resi to retire. But, you know, that... 25 years later, it's bigger than ever. I mean, one one fact after another is disproven. The Tamis haven't risen cataclysmically and, and, and don't appear to. All the models are wrong. The, the models have got the temperatures shooting up like that and the temperatures are, are, are continuing to ri rise at the same level of, of increase that they've been rising for 200 years uh, as we've uh, emerged from what was, what's called the Little Ice Age. Uh, you know, the, 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 as I said before, the hurricanes haven't... Uh, Increase the, the 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 water tables haven't increased around the around major cities. Uh, the the cupola bears are still intact. There's no extinctions, etc. So you know one after the other, these uh, these assertions uh, are discredited, but they just move on to the next one. You've actually reminded me of another phenomena in uh, climate science and academia, and and that is the. Uh, adjustments or what are they called smoothing of the the previous climate uh, yeah. temperatures mm -hmm. uh, I, re I remember well, it was a few years back now uh, Jennifer Mariosi she gave a presentation on how they were uh, f uh, basically adjusting the temperatures from the Darwin weather station to 
the, from the 1940s, just as an example, to... To normalise them. Yes, normalise, that's them, the yeah. word. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, there's an awful lot of that going on there. Canadians have just uh, uh, jettisoned a lot of their original data and, and put, replaced it by data which is nicely smoothed and shows increases in temperatures. Uh, you know, there, there, there's an awful lot of this, this climate fraud uh, going on. Uh, some of it unwittingly, but a lot of it is basically they, 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 they're, they're manipulating the data to prove the points that they want to prove. But the, 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 the key thing that can't be manipulated is the satellite data. I mean, and we do have the satellite data and, and it's, it is not showing the increases that, that, the, uh, that the modeling had promoted. The, there's certainly an increase as a result of humankind, uh, but it's a, it's a very small increase, about one degree Celsius which has already occurred uh, and uh, you know the, the, and, and, and which does not have any effects in terms of uh, sea levels or, or, or uh, pestilences and, and all the other things that, that were said to be resulting from climate change. Uh, Michael Mann, who's uh, one of the, the, the climate uh, academics, uh, he sued critics of his, his hockey stick climate uh, graph and he's recently uh, lost the case, uh, which is, uh, the whole thing was a abhorrent to free speech and, and open uh, debate, though I, when I mentioned this to you, he's actually coming to Australia. Yes, he's actually Alan Succumb at the University of New South Wales, I think it, at, at Christmas for at least six months. Hmm. Uh, so yes, his, his work uh, was the, the photo poster for uh, climate change uh, in one of the uh, one of the IPCC uh, uh, one of the, uh, 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 reports, I think about ten or twelve years ago, because it had what was called the, the hockey stick. Suddenly, the temperature had been going along like that, and it suddenly rose this century, and that was because he'd manipulated the data to eliminate some of the other uh, rises and falls in temperatures which had occurred over the past two thousand years, and that that was, in fact, he was. Uh, he, he, uh, he that that was taken to task and a lot of it actually emerged from a, a massive leak of of information from uh, east anglia university which is one of the one of the housings uh, housings of this data uh, and uh, and uh, it was a chap, chap called ball in canada who had uh, made some acidic comments about man and man sued him and it appeared before a court of law and Ball said, well, look, show me your data because I think that, that it's wrong and man refused to show his data. And the judge threw it out totally and, and, and has awarded, awarded uh, costs against man. Man may not pay them because he's, he, he wouldn't probably want to go to Canada uh, to defend his case or he may, and he may well appeal. So you uh, think that he's a, maybe fleeing here? Well, he certainly, uh, he, he certainly would be not, not, not going to Canada, uh, I don't think, in the near future. Uh, and he's got a long, he's also, man has got a, a long standing case against Mark Stein, who the, yes. the journalist. And the same sort of things happened there. Mark, man, uh, Stein used to gain some highly colourful language to explain uh, the, 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 the fragilities, if you like, of man's work. And man sued. Uh, and he's been tied up in the courts for five or six years now. It's cost, it's cost Stein a lot of money. And somebody's paying for man's, uh, man's legal case. Uh, obviously not himself, because he's and he had an academic salary. But uh, he's very sensitive to people who, who criticise his work. Well, in Australia, there seems to be bipartisan support for further hate speech laws. They haven't <laughs> added the anti-scientific oh, vilification yeah. to it, but you never know. You never know. Basically, we've seen, uh, we can see some of that, of course, at the University in Far North Queensland with uh, Peter Ridd. Yes, where, right. uh, it's going uh, to the High Court, his unfair dismissal case, yeah. even though he was uh, awarded, uh, was it 1.5 yes, million, $1 million dollars in compensation? For, and we the people are fighting him still. Uh, we, we the people, in other words, the taxpayer is financing this uh, vanity project against uh, the, the, the University of North, North Queensland. Well, you'd think that given that verdict, that it may may force them to maybe rethink uh, that they should be more more inclusive of... No, it won't. I <laughs> promise you it won't. Yeah, yeah, it but will that's, not. that's what you'd think. You would, you would think yes. that. <laughs> they won't. Mm. <laughs> of course, I'm, I'm speaking with, like, obviously rationally. <laughs> <laughs> but, of course, we, we know that's lacking these days. Yeah. Now, I've also got you on tonight to give a bit of a, a reality uh, check. And, obviously, 
people have pointed out that it's always Western nations that are told that we need to make the the, the sacrifices to, to fight climate change. It's, it's now that uh, you have a, a European and American uh, millennials who say we're not going to have children to combat climate change. There's obviously Prince Harry and Meghan Markle saying we're only going to have two children. And then we have to give out meat as well. There's these woke companies who are now uh, developing plant-based uh, bur burgers. We now have, what is it, some councils have meat-free Mondays, there's meat-free Fridays. They're, it's it's always the Western nations. They it's it's never developing nations, uh, China and India. Mm. Uh, they they're always left out. Yeah, well, that's uh, that, that's certainly the case. And in in terms of the emissions, the emissions basically are aren't from Western nations now. Sixty percent or seventy, uh, sixty two thirds, I think, of emissions are coming from developing countries, uh, China, India, Indonesia. Um, Brazil, etc., uh, who which, which are basically not going to do anything. They make a lot of sounds. And they say they're going to increase this and going to increase that, but they're they're bringing in, in more and more coal-fired power stations. And, and who can blame them? Because they want to raise their living standards. The only way you can do that is either through coal or or nuclear, I guess. And uh, coal is coal happens to be cheaper. Uh, so basically, and and, and you know that. They, 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 I can see the Chinese deciding to give up pork. I mean, they have a problem with swine flu at the moment in China, but giving up meat there would be would be ridiculous. And uh, they're certainly now eating more meat than they've ever eaten before, and will will continue to do so. So these are kind of vanity projects we have of meatless Mondays and things like yeah. that, which we all we all do. It's it's almost like saying, you know, putting on your bumper sticker, "Free Tibet." Uh, yeah, great, free to bet. Yeah, what are you going to do? You're going to go over there, go over there with an AR-15 rifle and, and kill all the people to, who, who, are, who are allegedly oppressing the, Viet, the, the, the Tibetans? You know, it's, it's just a sort of way in which we prove we're good people by saying we're, we're, we're going to have a meatless Monday. Well, the reason why they want to give us a, <clears throat> us to give up meat is because of the methane that cows mm -hmm. uh, produce, which uh basically you you break it down to that uh we need to stop farts to stop the climate changing mm -hmm. yeah it's belching rather than farting mm. by the way but you know it's both i suppose but belching more than anything else but yeah that's the, this is a, it comes down to that it's basically uh yeah we i think one of the interesting things as well is on this is plastics we've got to stop plastics too and there's, there's quite interesting dumperfuls of, uh, of, uh, of the paraphernalia which the children's crusade we, we, uh, had left when they when they went on their uh, day off school. Oh, uh, uh, with all sorts there of was that and... fake photo, the the one from it, it was by the Youth Coal Coalition. That was they said that was Hyde Park in in Sydney. It wasn't. It was Hyde Park in London, and that was a four from a 420 uh marijuana right. rally so, oh, it? yes <laughs> that's been the, the the left have been raging about this dangerous right. fake news all right all week so no that wasn't okay. wasn't real yeah but going back to like plastics is is another thing obviously plastic bags and now plastic uh straws and uh, i had a report that uh, mcdonald's with their paper straws they weren't actually recyclable and <laughs> Let's say that was a big, yeah. big fail there. Yeah. But uh, in terms of domestic Australian uh, politics, uh, with the the Greens, their their climate uh, warriorism is now clashing with their NIMBYism because former leader Bob Brown is now doesn't like wind turbines because well they they ruin the the coastline mm -hmm. yeah. and he doesn't want them in his uh, part of northern Tasmania. Yeah, I mean, and that's basically the the Greens. Are just an anti anti wealth at least anti wealth for ordinary people not anti wealth for themselves and uh you know so uh, they're against anything any development anything which which uh, perturbs the countryside uh they appear to be okay with um with solar at the present time but i can imagine solar they'll think oh well so they, there's a lot of heat coming from these things they're killing birds and all that sort of stuff so that 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 the day will come when they'll denigrate this too because as you say the the denigrated wind, which was uh, the, 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 supposed to be the the, the uh, solution to all our problems, uh, only a few years ago, and is now no longer fully accepted. And Labour's in the middle of their uh, post-election review, 
And there's a lot of d debate within Labor whether they should dump their 45% emissions reduction target by 2030, their 50% uh, renewable energy target. There's obviously of the uh, Labor MPs that still represent uh, working class electorates like uh, Joel Fitzgibbon in, in Hunter. Uh, he's, he's obviously wanting it to be, be ditched and so is is Mark Butler, but you have, uh, it was just broken, Brendan O'Connor today said that, no, we should keep the uh, the climate targets, and it was just Bill Shorten, he was, he, nobody liked him, that was the reason we lost. Mm. Well, I mean, and that, and that might well be the, the policy they go with, but, you know, uh, they, 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 the problem is that the more they do that, they'll bleed votes to the, the green left, mm. and so the, uh, there's not an ounce of any rationality in, in, in terms of public policy rationality in there. It's basically, how can we win the election? Uh, how can we keep the mugs on our side who we're exploiting because we're going to increase their en energy prices while bringing these, these idiots on the green left to, to us as well? I mean, and that's a major problem in, in this city, in, uh, in, in, in Melbourne, where, you know, those inner city seats uh, switching towards the Greens and uh, the, the the Andrews government is basically trying to stop that happening by be, being seen to be much more green itself. Well, it's also a problem for the Liberal Party as well, because mm -hmm. there was a good electorate graph uh, in, I think, the Australian, which showed Western Sydney, which is traditionally Labor, Eastern Sydney, which is traditionally Liberal, but in the last uh, state and federal election, the, they're moving in opposite swings. Yeah. There's a swing to Liberals in the West, a swing to Labour and other left-wing parties in the, the East. And so you have seats like Warringah, Wentworth, uh, North Sydney, uh, in Sydney, and then down here in Melbourne, you have seats like uh, Higgins and Kuyong mm -hmm. and, and Goldstein, which Liberal Party, well, they don't want to lose seats. And so you have the, the local MPs there, people are like uh, Tim Wilson and, and Dave Sharma, they campaign on the slogan, Modern yeah, Liberal. Modern liberals, yeah. and so they have to obviously prove to their uh, base, which is its upper, well, 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 I guess you'd call it the, the, the upper upper class, the... Yeah, I guess the elitist liberal, liberal yes, people. Yes, yes, that, that, that's uh, a more crude term. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and indeed, this isn't, uh, this is a phenomenon around the world, isn't mm. it? If you think of the Republicans, they're switching, you know, they're pulling all the, the kind of working class votes mm. away f from what we used to, the Democrats, and losing their inner city votes in the California and the high tech and all that. And in the in the UK, you know, basically the Brexit thing is is a working class Midlands and north northern part as opposed to London. So it's certainly the climate phenomenon is going to throw up some strange results electorally in the next few elect election cycles. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's for sure. Now, what is the, the worst case scenario from the actual climate scientists? Because we now are seeing some climate scientists like respond to Greta like, no, like it's it's not going to be that bad, but there are going to be some some problems. So what what is actually the worst case scenario and like how how's it going to affect humanity and the ecosystems? Well, I, I, don't, I don't think it will affect it one iota. I mean, if there, if there is global warming. Oh, if there's global warming on the, in, in the two or three or four degrees Celsius, then there may well be some, there will be some. Uh, That's what I'm so, talking about, the, but, if they're right. Well, if they're, if they're right, then we would see a transformation of agriculture uh, would move north. It'd be great for Russia, <laughs> it'd be good for Canada. Uh, we would we'd probably see more desertification in Australia, but there would be a gradual shift of agricultural production. But in terms of, uh, of other things, it's very difficult to see. I mean, it, it'll be hotter. If it's hotter, so what? It's, it's hotter in, in Brisbane than it is here in, in Melbourne. People live there and, and, and happily live there. Uh, you know, so uh, there, there wouldn't, uh, there, there won't be any major economic reactions. Um, except over a very long period, which which which, which is easily managed, uh, it's difficult to say if if there's, you know, Greta was talking about oh there's tipping points, but nobody really takes those seriously. They're not they're not featured highly in the IPCC literature. They 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 they, they, they oh yes, seen the as, old that if there's a slight warming, yeah, it's going that to we'll, that will send the uh, the Arctic and the Antarctic all melt, and suddenly the the, the oceans will uh, inundate us all. Well, you know, that, that's, we see that in science fiction f films, but it, it, it will not happen. It, 
nobody, no serious scientist thinks it, it is conceivable. So, you know, there would be, change, if there are changes of, of a three or four or five degree Celsius increase, then there will be changes to the way we live. But they won't be cataclysmic changes, they'll be just changes to the way we live. It's much more likely that, there will, that we've seen a one degree Celsius increase uh, or something close to it. We won't see anything more than that uh, because the, 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 those increases which are estimated to be higher than that depend on a feedback through carbon dioxide and clouds etc and water vapor uh, which doesn't appear to be to be the case so essentially there won't be there won't be much warming there won't be much difference the way we live i know that we shouldn't bl uh, base whether climate change is happening by the the weather but you and i are both melburnians and the same thing happens every year winter catches us by surprise and we we mm. all say it's the coldest mm. winter ever mm -hmm. uh, uh, it seems to actually increase the, the amount of people complaining about the Melbourne winter yeah. every year. And every drought is the same, you know, essentially every time there's a drought, it's the worst drought in history, but you go back and look at the data and then mm. there's, there's, mass, there's very good rainfall data for Australia and, and it's up and down, it's up and down, it's very variable and it has been forever. Well, the, the drought's mainly affecting New South Wales and who's supposed to be looking out for the farmers uh, there, that's the New South Wales National Party and, well, look at what they're sort of obsessed with at the moment. No, it's a dreadful situation. The National Party aren't uh, uh, hopeless in terms of throwing water, water at, at environmental, non-existent environmental problems and starving the farmers and on the Murray Darling. It's a dreadful situation. Mm. And that's why in New South Wales would have seen Shooters, Fishers and Farmers Party, a lot of yeah. uh, electorates vote for that. Mm -hmm. Well, it's been great to, to chat mm. with you tonight, yeah. uh, Alan. Uh, thank, thanks for, for coming in. I only asked you last night, so I appreciate yeah. you uh, coming in tonight and yeah, giving a bit Happy of common yourself. sense ba uh, back into this. Now, I mentioned your uh, organisation, Regulation Economics. Economics. Uh, mm. How can people learn more and, and read about your... It's all, uh, we've got a website, www.regulationeconomics.com. It's all one word. And there's a stack of uh, material which I've written and various things uh, associated I guess half of it is energy and, and climate change issues but much of it is uh, is another aspects of regulation and uh, it's all there yeah I would urge everyone to, to check it out and I'll leave links in the, the show notes Terrific. page as well as your your books as well okay thank Great. you good thanks very much I'll bid you farewell now okay thanks for tuning in to Wilmsfront Visit timwilms.com or Rational Rise TV to view the archive of episodes. And keep visiting theunshackled.net to view all our shows. And to keep up with the latest real news and analysis.